All right, so we can get started by deleting the default cube by pressing X and deleting like so. And you know what? We can also get rid of the light. So the first thing we're going to do is add in the reference images. Uh, as I said before, you will be able to download this uh, in the, I guess, project files below. So just make sure to download that and uh, then you can start adding in your reference images. So I've just added in the side reference image and then I'll go to image, reference and add in the front reference image. So what I can do is just position them where they need to be. So I'll do that with the side view because that's the one that's selected right now. And what I'll do is press Alt R and that will clear the rotation. And then I will press R, X and 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. However, since we want, oh wait, ah, okay. So I've selected the, uh, the front one. So that means that we can leave it as is. So I can just press G and Y and push it back here like so. So for the other uh, reference image, the side one, um, we can do the same thing. So we'll just press Alt R, then R, X and 90. And then we will need to rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis, because if we want to view it from the side, we actually need it to be facing this way. So what I'll do is just press R, Z and 90. And then as we can see, it is facing the right way. So now what I will do is just press G, X, and just push it back to about here. All right, so now if we go into front view and side view, you can see that we have our reference images positioned quite nicely. Uh, one thing to note is that since I don't have a numpad, I am using the tilde key on my keyboard. That is the key above the tab key and below the escape key on my keyboard. You might have to uh, kind of test around to find where that is. But if you have a numpad, you can use that to change the views. Anyway, we can get started by pressing shift A and adding in a mesh and a plane. And this will be the basis of our model. Uh, as a side note, I did add in a few different reference images. Uh, there's some with the actual squares, which I can just show you right now. So if I go to image and reference, I actually have uh, reference images with the lines just for extra help, but I do think that the, uh, as a good modeling exercise, it's better for you to not trace the, the faces exactly. But this is if you want a bit more help and guidance with uh, how this should be laid out. So um, yeah, but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna stick to the one without the lines and just use my own judgment. Anyway, I can delete that and we can actually start modeling. So I'll go into front view and let me just make sure that it's positioned well, okay. And what I can do is press R, X and 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. And to speed up our modeling process, what we can do is add in a mirror modifier. This means that we only need to work on one side of the model. So we can do this by pressing Control R, adding in an edge loop and then pressing right click to leave it in the middle. And then I will just delete this face here. Oops, press X, delete face. And then go to the modifiers tab, add modifier, and find the mirror modifier here. And then make sure to enable clipping so that the middle vertices don't come apart. All right, so we can actually start modeling the helmet by just scaling everything down and then positioning it around here, the brow region, I would say. And then for the side view, just press G and Y to bring it to the front here. So uh, the principle of modeling this uh, this helmet is, I guess, just tracing around the, the 3D model in both front and in side view. And this is actually quite an important way of modeling, or it's quite a good way of modeling. And it teaches you that you should be able to work in both front and side view quite effectively to create your entire model. Uh, when I actually figured this out for myself, it was actually quite a revolutionary a uh, piece of information in terms of my modeling skills. And now I can feel like I can model quite a lot more just from these principles that you will learn in this video. So what we can do is just trace out the image. So I'll press E to extrude and just extrude it down to about here for the nose region. And just so that we can see uh, our, uh, our model or our reference image behind the model, I'll press Alt and Z to enable X-ray mode, just so that we have the uh, just so that we can see the reference image. And then I will just bring in this, these vertices here by pressing G and X. So I just press one for vertex select and then G and X. And then, and then I'll press E once again, Z to lock it to the Z axis. 
and then we can bring it to about here. And then what I will do is just select this vertex here and then press G and Z so that we have that pointy uh, little nose. And if you want, you can actually just press G and freely move it. All right, so I will extrude a few more times. So E and Z to bring up, E and Z to bring up, and then E and Z once more to bring up to about here. And then I will press G and Z and kind of complete the, uh, the pointy region up here. Once again, you don't need to be following exactly uh, how the model looks. Sometimes if you believe that your uh, model is looking slightly better, then definitely go for that. It's not supposed to be a one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, replication of the model. So if we go into side view, as you can see here, we uh, our helmet is not being aligned to the reference image. So what we can do is just go to the side view and just press G and Y to pull it back. Uh, what's easier to do is to go into uh, vertex select mode by pressing one and then just box select by holding down the left mouse, mouse button, making sure that you're in wireframe mode. So press Alt Z. Then I'll just box select, press G and Y and bring back like so. And then whoops, and then I'll press G and Y, bring to about here. Again, you don't need to be too precise, but just so that you have that curve in the helmet. So if we just go into 3D mode, you can see that we have a slight curve to the helmet, which is exactly what we want. So now uh, what I'll do is just continue creating the model by pressing E to extrude and then E to extrude. So we just have these two regions here. And then if I go up into the top view, as you can see, uh, you already know that for most people's faces, uh, their faces are curved. I'd say pretty much everyone's face is curved like this. So we don't want it to be like just straight. And we can do this by pulling back these, these edges that you see here. So let me just undo those strokes. And then what I can do is just press G and Y to bring back like so. And then G and Y to bring it back like so. Now we have that curved forehead look. And uh, if we want, we can actually just make it match our reference image a little bit better and just move it like so. And then I'll push G and just move it down. All right. Maybe what I'll do is just select these edges here and just press G and Z just so that this region isn't too big. All right. And then what I can do is use one of the modifiers to help us build the rest of this region here of the forehead. So this is the F2 add-on and you can enable it by going up to edits, preferences, and then in the add-on section here, type in F2 and you should find mesh F2. All right, so that means uh, for the F2 add-on to work, if you have, uh, I guess, a corner vertices or like almost perpendicular uh, vertices, so three vertices like so, and you select the middle one, when you press F, you will be met with a fourth vertex, which means that you now have a quad. And Blender likes quad topology. Uh, I'll speak on that a bit more later, but just know that having four-sided shapes in your model is preferred in Blender, but it's not necessary to make a good model. All right, so now that we have the, uh, the uh, face here, we can just continue building the model by pressing F to fill or F for the F2 add-on and then just positioning it about here and then making sure to left click to confirm and then press F to fill. I keep saying fill, but it's not necessarily fill and just leave it like so. And then we can keep doing that to, uh, to build our model. So I'll press the F2 add on once again, just press F like so. And what I can do actually is just press G and G twice to slide down the vertices just so that we have a bit more or a bit less like a slanting of these vertices here. So I'll select this one and this one, and then press G twice to enable edge slide, just so that, yeah, our edges are a bit more straight. Then I'll press the F for the F2 add-on, like so. And whoops, I will press F once more, like so. And what I can do actually is just select the, these vertices here and just press G and Z just so that they're kind of following along with um, the reference image. So we have been neglecting the side view uh, quite a bit. So let's just make sure that we are uh, just making sure that 
you know, our, we're following our reference mostly well. So I'll just press G and just move the vertices wherever they need to be. If they don't line up in front and side view, that is okay. They don't necessarily need to. Uh, it's just, again, a guideline more than a rule. And there we go. So we can continue building our model. Yep. So if we just go into uh, 3D view, you can see that we are starting to build out the faceplate. And I'll continue doing this by just selecting these vertices here, pressing E to extrude, like so, and leaving it about here. I'll just try and flatten these by just moving the uh, the vertex the vertex vertices apologies the vertices i was going to say vertexes but uh select this edge here now and then press e to extrude downwards maybe locking onto the z-axis and then i'll just press g twice to slide it up like so I'll press g twice or just press g to move these edges up like so again just making these tiny adjustments just to keep our topology clean now, if you go into the front view, you can see that it's just flat, which is not how our reference image is supposed to be. So just select this vertex here and the back, the last one here, and then press G and just move it out like so. There we go. And then press E to extrude, and we are going to make this region here. So we'll just press G and just move this part down. And then press E to extrude this part. Oops, let me just adjust that like so. Again, if you hold down the shift key, uh, that means you will be slowing down your movement. And uh, yeah, that's just uh, a better way of having more precision over your movements. And then I just press E once again and trying to get it to line up with the, with the uh, faceplate or the reference image, I should say. Go into front view, and then I'll just press G and X to bring it about here. Maybe just bring it down. Then I will press G and move it to about here, like so. And if I go into front view, let me just press G and X to bring out this part here as well, like so. And I will press G and Z to bring down this part here, like so. All right, so our faceplate is coming along quite nicely. And let's just continue creating this region here. So I'll just Alt-click this edge loop here. Press E and Z to extrude downwards. And you know what? I'll scale it on the Z axis to zero by pressing S, Z, and zero just so that this, uh, this edge is flat here. And then I'll press E and Z to bring it down like so. Now, all I need to do is just adjust these vertices by pressing G and Z. Select this one, G, whoops, did I make a mistake? Yes, I did. Okay, G and Z, like so. And select this one and just position it, position it to about here. And I will just move this one here and just move the vertices until you get something that looks good. So in the front view, I need to adjust it as well. And now I'll press G and Z and move it to about here. Ooh, that looks quite off from the, uh, from the side reference image. So again, now this is up to you to use your own uh, discernment and just you know, tell or find what looks best for you. It might be some halfway point in between the two reference images. Uh, however, you might just need to fiddle around with it a little bit, just so that you can uh, find out what you, you want. All right. So I'd say that looks pretty good. We might come back to tweaking it, but uh, for now I'm quite happy and we can continue making the rest of the helmets. But first, just make sure to save just so that you don't lose any of your progress and we can continue on. Mm -hmm. 